Electric bikes, they are the future and they are here to stay. Now, with Cayenne World taking over the Zero Motorcycle uh, Agency in South Africa, there's been renewed interest uh, with electric motorcycles here in the country. With me is Chris Langloy. I got that right, didn't I? Yes. You are the Global Technical Training Manager for Zero. That's correct. So, obviously, you're here to, to help the, the service personnel at Cayenne World basically work on these bikes without killing themselves. That's correct. <laughs> okay. And uh, I, I have a very well well-rounded knowledge of the business, so I've been able to work with the sales team, the parts team, accessories team, yeah. accounting, uh, to kind of get them off on the right foot. Okay, let's um, let's leave that to one side for a moment. Um, let's go right to the, back to the beginning of zero. Why and well, when and why did it start? So it all started sometime around 2006 with a former NASA engineer uh, named Neil Sakai, mm. and he was just building. Uh, electric BMX bikes, and at the time we were called Electrocross. Okay. Uh, shortly after, we got some investors, and uh, they decided to, uh, collectively to change the name to Zero for zero emissions, virtually zero maintenance, all these different aspects. And uh, we were born in uh, 2008, is when we went to full production motorcycles. Uh, back when it was Neil Sakai, it was in his garage with a handful of his friends and other people that he had met uh, there in the Santa Cruz area. Mm. I just want to touch on you. You're based in California, which is known for its strict emission controls and, and Correct. This. Was this maybe a slight driving force behind developing an electric bike? Uh, actually, it was really just a, a number of uh, motorcyclists that were also electric motor mm -hmm. enthusiasts, and they just kind of all collectively got together and started making this, this electric motorcycle. They, they really liked the idea of the electric vehicle and wanted to do the same for two-wheeled vehicles. Yeah. Now, let's look at that very first Zero motorcycle. What, I mean, let's, everyone talks about range and top speed on electric bikes. So what was the range of that very first? So in 2008, when we went with the, the first S and DS models, uh, the range was very limited, 25 miles at most. Uh, power was pretty weak, mm -hmm. uh, especially in comparison <laughs> to today. Um, but it was, it was, it was an electric motorcycle. It was. Um, was that a production bike ready uh, for sale to it, to the public? It was in in 2008. It was a, a relatively full size motorcycle, mm. street legal, registrable, uh, and and legal to ride on the street. And and we had a lot of customers that were very interested in in the same concept. So we had a lot of early adopters mm. in 2008. Now you've. From there to where we are sitting here with these bikes, there's obviously been a huge development. Uh, yes. How many kind of, I mean, can you put a, number, a figure on the number of stages there have been to get from there to here? I, I would say somewhere between five and six stages of, okay. of battery technology, powertrain technology, uh, and, and this, this current uh, version came out in uh, 2013 and uh, has, has really changed the motorcycle, mm. the electric motorcycle industry. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was, wanted to touch on, was that each stage of development, what has prompted that change in the motorcycle design? Is it the battery, is it the technology? I mean, what, 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 what um, pushes the development of the bikes? Uh, the, big, the big thing is always range, because the mm. number one question that everybody asks is how far will it go on a charge? Uh, so until we can get to comparable ranges mm. on a single charge, uh, you know, that was our driving force. And, and with this new technology, we're pretty much there. It's uh, still a little low for, for highway riding, yeah. uh, but inner city, uh, if you add the power tank, you can get, you know, full 185 miles. And, I mean, in the future, are we talking about possibly the possibility of, like, range in the hundreds or even thousands of kilometers? Where can it go from here? Oh, yeah, it's, it's definitely coming. It, it is. is definitely coming. There's a lot of, lot of different technologies being tested. Uh, all of them are being tested at the cell phone level. Mm. Uh, one I can tell you about is called graphene. Now, my battery engineer doesn't really like that one too much, but uh, if you just look at graphene, they've now got iPhones running uh, screen-on talk time for two weeks and takes about 15 to 20 seconds to charge. Mm. Uh, when you mass that out to the electric vehicle aspect, whether it be car or motorcycle, uh, you should be able to do around 500 miles uh, in a car and take about 15 minutes to charge. Mm. When we hit that, gas is gonna go away. Because when, <laughs> when you can get 500 miles out of a vehicle and it only takes 15 minutes to charge, the only thing holding back there is the infrastructure for charging. Yeah. You know, like gas stations are on mm. every corner, will have charge stations on every corner. Yeah, and solar charging, surely that has to be an option for the future. 
Uh, portable solar charging is quite difficult because it requires quite a large yeah. uh, panel. Uh, so that, that makes it very difficult. Now for cars, campers, that sort of thing, certainly you could do that. Yeah. Now, let's, in terms of the actual bikes that you're producing, the technology is, is improving all the time. Mm -hmm. Are you matching that with uh, an increase in the quality of the components, like the suspension, the wheels, the brakes, and so on? Is that also progressing at, an even, at a, a similar rate? It is progressing, and mostly that is just a, a volume uh, concern. So as we've gotten to be a big enough company, uh, we've been able to do proper uh, pricing with uh, some of the major brands mm. uh, for uh, Showa Suspension, Pirelli Tires, Bosch ABS. Okay. Uh, but that was, it was more a volume thing than it was anything else because the key driving force has been range. The second driving force has been keeping the cost comparable to your, your average gasoline motorcycle. So if we're talking about uh, volume here. Is the company for profitable? Are you, are you going to move into profitability or yeah, it, how, is it, how is it looking? What's the forecast for the company? Uh, motorcycle industry from a profitability standpoint <laughs> is very difficult. Uh, so we've probably still got a few more years to get to there, but uh, currently our investors are extremely happy with our, our progress mm. and, and continue to fund us with, without uh, limitations. Uh, so we're, we're really in a good spot. And what sort of figures are we looking at in terms of sales at the moment, worldwide? Worldwide, uh, this year we're, we're looking to hit uh, 1,650 units is the, the okay. projected target for yeah. this year. And uh, we're, we're tracking along well. Mm. So we should hit that number. Now we've got to dispel a couple of urban myths here. Okay. The, it's been said that to charge one of these fully, Costs no more than charging uh, than boiling a kettle of water. Now I don't yeah. know who came up with that one. It's a little <laughs> bit more than that, but yeah. Roughly, what what is the equivalent sort of what what would be the equivalent to charging one of these? Can you say that? Is there a? Um, it, it comes out to essentially uh, in the U.S. It's about a dollar a day. So you to to charge the bike over the course of a month is thirty dollars, and when you compare that to uh, mm. A standard motorcycle taking twenty to twenty-five dollars to fill the tank on yeah. a, a you know, three to four-day basis. Yeah, uh, you know that's the, the cost savings are definitely there. And obviously, these are still it's an urban motorcycle. This is, you, we can't really tour on this yet, can we? Because the charge time is just too long. There are a few uh, really unique characters out there in the U.S. that have actually done the Trans America uh, commute quite mm. a few times, but they have uh, slightly modified motorcycles with. Uh, n a number of offboard chargers uh, mm. that they're tying in and, and charging uh, in about 45 minutes to an hour, and then they you know are able to go. Um, but it, it's not a common thing. It is meant to be a commuting motorcycle yeah. back and forth to work, to the grocery store, to to the, you know, drop the kids at soccer, and you know whatever mm. you know, whatever you can normally do in your. Uh, with your regular motorcycle, you can do with this, yeah. except touring. Cool. Well, Chris, thank you very much. We wish you all the best, and we will watch with interest on how the, uh, the range develops. Well, thank you, and we're glad to be here in South Africa and hope we can uh, really get into this, this uh, industry here. Fantastic. Thanks, Chris. You're welcome. <laughs>